Hi everyone, welcome to Seek Up. Today I've got a really special guest on, Rob Mack, and we're gonna be talking about happiness and the journey from sadness, anxiety, depression into true happiness. So I think we should get started and kind of have you guys just really meet Rob. So hi Rob. Hi. Welcome <laughs> to Seek Up, thanks for joining. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So not everyone knows you. I mean, I know you, I think you're awesome. <laughs> I think- It's uh, enough for me, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. If you would tell everyone like yeah. you're an author, <laughs> what, what are your books about? And yeah. what's your, what are you up to these days? Great question. So I'm um, a happiness coach mm -hmm. um, and a happiness author. And so I speak and write about ways to live your happiest, mm -hmm. healthiest life from the inside out. Um, and that's the name of your first book, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Good call, Kino. Yeah, it's Happiness from the Inside Out, so was, that was the first book. I mostly wrote that book um, in the beginning because I was so miserable, <laughs> right? I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Um, and I just got to a place in my life where I was even suicidal. Mm. Um, so, you know, when you get to that place, you're sort of looking for anything to help. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was looking for anything to help, and nothing really helped. Um, and then I eventually got to a place where I was um, so unhappy I considered you know, doing something about it. And um, but in that moment, it's so strange because even as I look back today, the strangest thing happened because as I was contemplating like committing suicide and I didn't really have anything really wrong with my life to be honest, and that was mm -hmm. part of it, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, I should be grateful. I've got a great life. I have, you know, a decent job. At the time I had a beautiful girlfriend. Um, you know, my family was all healthy. Mm -hmm. I was really didn't have anything to be unhappy about. And yet I was unhappy, which yeah. made it worse because I felt like I should be grateful. Yeah, so you had sort of unhappiness guilt. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It just compounds. Mm -hmm. um, but as so I so tell me more about those suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Like I mean, I many you guys might not know this, but I went through a period where I also suffered from suicidal thoughts almost every day. And was it just sort of ideation, or was it like planning? Yeah, no, it was planning. Like you probably can't really see, but I got right there. And right there, I've got wow. two test marks on my wrist there. Test marks, or uh -huh. test mark? You just test it out? Or? Uh, I wanted to do it, uh -huh. and I really dug in because um, I wanted to know how painful it was, for one. Wow. Um, but in that moment, complete peace, inexplicable. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So it, I call that kind of like divine intervention, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what do you mean by peace? Like you? Like, like I felt like completely dug? at peace about everything. Like I dug in. Mm -hmm. It's not like I Did passed out. Yeah. Yeah, I drew blood. Uh -huh. And oh, you're in the bathtub. No, I was just, no. Oh, yeah, I wasn't, no. I, I had, even though I had researched I, <laughs> in the time, I wasn't that okay. strategic. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm going to, you know, fix this. And um, yeah, I just, as I dug in, I felt the pain of it. It wasn't that bad. And I started, my mind went quiet. And I realized that later mm. that my mind was quiet, complete peace. Nothing in my life had changed, but something on the inside felt fresh and new. Was that and a turning just, point for you? It was. Because mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh, I could put off suicide for a week. Okay. At least an hour. At that point, it was an hour. It was like, I can put it off for like one hour mm -hmm. or just a day maybe, maybe. And let me see if I can just do a little research and find out what's going on with me. Mm. You know? And that was sort of the stepping stone for me to begin looking, seeking. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that, that's, yeah. that's really insightful. I mean, the idea that actually going through and almost testing out the plan yeah. gave you the impetus to delay the plan right. and therefore make a pivotal shift. Would you consider that sort of like your rock bottom in terms of unhappiness, that moment yes. when you actually began to test out the, the vehicle of suicide? Yes, definitely. And it's not that I didn't have, didn't return to similar places again, psychologically and emotionally, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't quite that bad where I was that serious mm -hmm. about, you know, so was that, did you have, I know that you had, you mentioned that you had suicidal ideation as well. What was mm -hmm. your experience? Did it come to that? Or? Well, for me, what I would do is I would, um, I, 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 I could have never, I don't think I could have ever slit my wrists. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've uh, gotten a vitamin IV recently and <laughs> that was uh, enough. it was traumatic, you know, like yeah. they come with this needle and I'm like, ah, yeah. no, get it away from me. <laughs> so I just am not good with needles. Yeah. I'm just not like, I've never yeah. been to the hospital. I'm yeah. just not really, I'm not, that's not really my <laughs> forte, you know? Yes. And, um, I didn't really like the vitamin. I mean, I liked how I felt after the mm -hmm. vitamin IV, but then I felt like I was volunteering for a medical procedure. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, what, what I would do is that there were, I would wake up every morning and I would sit with this thought. I would look around my life and I would just see everything that I had succeeded at. And I would see the cost 
yeah. rather than um, the celebration. So yeah. I would see, well, here is this, this book that I'd written, um, but then here's all of the pain that was around it. And here's this beautiful table that uh, my husband and I bought together, but here's the argument that we had about that mm. table. And here's this beautiful place that we're living, but then here's the arguments we've had about that. So I would see all of the things and I would just see the wounds nice. of it all. And I remember having this feeling like my life is like a, um, a, a computer. Yeah. I felt like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a computer that, the, that there's, it's gone so wrong, you can't restart it anymore. And I remember feeling like I need to be returned to the manufacturer. Really? Yeah. I just felt like this is a computer. Oh, if I was a computer, yeah. I need to be returned to Apple, oh my gosh. if you have apples, um, and then <laughs> I need to be fixed. I, and there, I couldn't do it myself, and I just need to be. That's when I felt like I returned to the manufacturer, start, do over, wow. and I felt like I understand what I did wrong. I get it. I see my mistake. I get it, but I can't make it right. That friend that I lost because of that situation, I see it, but I can't make it right. Oh, I wow. see it, and I wouldn't do it again, and I'm so sorry. But they don't forgive me, and they're not in my life now, and I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. And I would just see that everywhere, and so I would wake up every day, and I would just think, how can I press the restart button? Yeah. And I was thinking, well, if I die. I will retain the wisdom, right. and then I'll be reborn, and I'll, I'll feel like I get a do-over. Right. I'll do it again. Oh, wow. You know, that's I'll, profound. I, I thought that, and I remember thinking, you know, you drive a lot in Florida, and I remember thinking <laughs> every time I drove on the expressway, I felt like my life was in danger yeah. because I felt like if I just there are a couple of exits, yeah. and I would plan that if I just accelerated yeah. off of the exit, that mm -hmm. I would crash the car. Oh my God. And so I felt like, well, then I was thinking that then maybe my parents and the people around right. me, then they could somehow, it wouldn't necessarily be this big suicidal event. It would just be, well, she's gone now. Oh my gosh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So that I, and every time I drove over, I had this split second where I would just like consider flooring the car and then I would be like, no, no, there's an exit. Whoa. And so that was really dark. It's very dark. <laughs> that was really, really dark. I think most people that have some kind of su suicidal ideation like that, I think they do sort of toy with that idea in their head mm -hmm. and um, sometimes it feels more serious than others but I certainly mm -hmm. thought that way too. Yeah. Like I could just easily drop off a bridge. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that it seemed like that even at that time though you sort of had a more transcendental awareness of something though that like you would be able to retain that wisdom mm. and you could return to life mm -hmm. and you could do it again. That's what I of. really wanted forgiveness yeah. and atonement is what mm. I wanted. I wanted a blank slate. And so I guess we have two questions. First of all, we when we were taking viewer questions, and thanks so much for viewing everyone, um, we got a question from someone who has a private account. So since it's a pretty serious question, I'm not gonna share your social media, but thank you for being honest and sharing your question. So we got a question, how to deal with suicidal ideation. Yeah. So what's your advice to our viewers out there um, who are dealing with this? Maybe you feel so alone and you feel so lost and you feel like you know the world on your shoulders. What's your advice to someone who's sitting with that? Man, that's such a powerful question. You know, um, I'd say that First, it's recognizing, and this is my experience, okay? I'm open to being wrong. Um, the most intelligent people I know and the most sensitive people I know have contemplated suicide at some point in their lives. So that's, that was the first thing that I recognized. Mm -hmm. And so um, you contemplating suicide um, is actually a testament to your own intelligence and your own sensitivity. Okay, so I used to always joke and say, I don't trust anyone unless they've actually been seriously depressed or <laughs> suicidal, because otherwise I'm not sure you've looked deeply enough into life. Because when you look at life, life can be a very depressing proposition. I mean, when you look at it, okay, mm -hmm. everybody that you love and everything that you love at some point in time will not be here with you physically. Yeah. And that is extremely hard to deal with if you think about it. Um, so the first part is sort of acceptance. Acceptance for me is recognizing, and then I think it's looking deeper. And, and really beginning to ask yourself, what is it at the core of this problem, suicidal ideation, that is bothering me the most, that I'm most upset about? For me, I recognized that it was life itself, the whole, I had this existential angst. Mm -hmm. It was the proposition of life, like everything that I'm working hard, to, hard towards achieving or acquiring or you know, everybody that I wanna meet and connect with, um, I'm feeling I'm gonna lose them one day. And that to me was just deeply unsettling and disturbing. I didn't wanna to have to live a whole life only to get to the end of it to realize that everything I had worked for and invested time and energy in was gonna be gone. So when I began to look deeper into that though, I had a number of revelations um, and realizations that began occurring. But the first place for me to start was just acceptance. Accepting this is where I'm at, this is telling me something, there's something very important inside um, that I need to investigate. So let me explore this and find out what's going on here. And what was the first thing you found? 
um, the first thing I found was that my mind was a troublemaker. Uh -huh. That's the first thing. Like, I recognized that, like, you said it so eloquently, you know, you said, you know, man, I wrote the book, and it was such so great, everybody else is celebrating it, kind of, but I f just saw the cost involved. And, yeah. and I noticed that my mind was very good at that. The mind is very good at solving problems, that's what it's for, yeah. right? Um, but like the center of a ship, it goes looking for problems to solve. So it's not just that it's a problem solver, it's a problem seeker. Yeah. Right? So when I began to recognize that, that the mind itself is somewhat problematic. Mm -hmm. It creates problems to solve, it solves them, and even if there's no problem that it can find to solve, it comes up with one. Mm -hmm. It's looking for problems. Yes, yeah. exactly. So when I realized it was really my mind that was kind of creating this entire experience for myself, and that I had moments in my day when for no good reason I was happy, Right? There are, there are moments in everybody's day, no matter how yeah. suicidal you are, that you're happy. Mm -hmm. If I just paid more attention to those moments, mm -hmm. things start getting better and better. Mm -hmm. And I realized that you could even tweak that, and you can push it in a certain direction, steer a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it was just coming to a recognition that the problem wasn't life, so to speak. It wasn't other people. It wasn't my circumstances. It was the way I was thinking. Mm, so to take responsibility is kind of that first step out of the world is a big bad place and I'm either mm. fighting against it or I'm going to quit on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And part of it, and I want to hear your experience, part of the realization for me too was I thought that through suicide I could escape something. That, mm. was, the, that was the folly in, in my thinking. And um, as I began to explore like every spiritual, religious tradition, I recognized that they pretty much all said something similar, which is essentially, you can't get out this way. <laughs> this yeah. is a dead end. Yeah. You know, you either be reborn, you'll go to hell, all these things. And yeah. some of them feel closer to the truth than others. Mm -hmm. um, but I just recognized that, hey, smarter people, more enlightened people than me were saying, this is not going to work, right. Rob. And, yeah. You know, it may even make things worse. Mm -hmm. um, so you might as well deal with it now. Mm -hmm. Pema Chodron, she's got a book called The Wisdom of No Escape. Ah. So. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Learning to sit with your stuff, yeah. whatever that stuff might be. That's it. I think one of the hardest things for people, yeah. say, uh, feeling these suicidal thoughts is this um, overwhelming sense of aloneness. Yeah. Being alone yeah. in the journey and feeling so lonely and so lost and like no one understands you and you have no one to turn to. So mm. you're friendless and you're sitting with your sadness and your depression and your mistakes and your anxiety in your mind and everyone you reach out to, it's like they don't get you, they don't understand you. So did you reach out to anyone or would you recommend for people to reach out to someone in that, that state? Absolutely. Um, I wasn't great at that. I mean, I, I, I would joke about it mm -hmm. um, and I was hoping that I would hook someone mm -hmm. <laughs> to understanding that it was serious. Mm -hmm. And then there were some moments when I shared and I was more vulnerable and I said, you know, life really sucks, man. Like, I know that objectively my life is fine. BMW sitting there doing just fine. The money coming in the cat, that's all just fine. Yeah. I understood that, but at a deeper level, things were just not fine. And so I shared that in moments. Um, but to be honest with you, I felt deeply alone mm -hmm. th that nobody understood. And so if you can reach out to someone, um, you know, anyone really, um, it's very helpful because mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. Most people have had something go on in their lives that made them feel pretty depressed if they've lived life at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, did you reach out to people? What did you do? When you well, were... I was, um, I, I remember that I was occasionally, my husband and I were, were seeing a therapist uh, for just for sort of couples counseling and yeah. the therapist asked to see me alone. And I remember sitting in the therapist's office and she said, um, you know, and she said, well, I, I like talked to her for the session and sort of as it was ending, she said to me, on a scale of one to 10 um, uh, on depression, I rate you as a 10. And I'd recommend that you seek, you institutionalize yourself um, or, and, and immediately go on medication. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like I'm a yogi, yeah. like I can fix this. Like, right. no, and she, she really just said, you cannot do this alone. Like you're not gonna go back and just do your yoga practice. This is a serious state inside of your mind and you are at risk right now. Like you're at risk to yourself, you're, you are not, well, you need to be around people that can protect you. And I just remember thinking, okay, well, I don't want to do medication and I don't want to be institutionalized. And so then I thought, should I, is this the time to go to India? You know, but then India, it's amazing. It's also a little bit of an es escape because all your problems go away. You know, you travel around the world and then, you know, no one's emailing you. You, live, you know, your whole day is just sort of, do I get a coconut or do I drink a chai? <laughs> and then it's over, you know, right. and then all the problems in the United States, well, they happen while you're sleeping and you wake up and you just feel like, oh, well, it's all, like problems have happened and been solved and you slept. Yeah, exactly.